thing? I don't know. Um, no idea. Huh. Okay, so we're going to start. No, we're not going to start over, but we're going to continue on from our words from last week then. Um, I will put these words back up. And so we were up to wah wah. Oh, wait. I'm going to say it wrong again. <laughs> wah wah say say? Yeah. Wah wah say say. Gotcha. So, how do you know then when to put that? the emphasis or can you just do it arbitrarily on words? Yeah, you can. Uh, you can do it too like when you're joking around with somebody like uh, say I was saying your name Jennifer, I'd say Jit Jennifer and then it would be like an emphasis on Jennifer and <laughs> it's understood in Ojibwe but not so much in English. <laughs> I kinda like that. So if I were to say I'm awesome, how would we emphasize that? <laughs> Neen, and then you would say, like you're saying the word me, right? Neen, right? Neen, and then uh, apogee. Apogee. That's what it is. I couldn't remember what it was. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and then the word parts on here. Um, do you want me to talk about the the emphatic markers again? Yes, please. All right. So the first two syllables are wa wa. And they've got emphasized twice on there. And when you put an emphasis on there, you're saying the syllable twice. And it's just putting emphasis on the word. So in this case, wa wa say say, there is lightning. And it's in reference to the light being lighter than light or clearer than clear. Um, a good reference for that is the word um, for 4th of July, the, the holiday, um, Independence Day. Also, uh, Canada Day, July 1st. So we call it Paposhk is a gay gizhigat. Paposhk is a gay gizhigat. And um, the word is Bosch is a gay, which is like an explosion. And then it's just reduplicating the first sound, which is ba. So it's ba, Bosch is a gay gizhigat. Also, the other thing, I think we did, um, we did soft and hard sounds. Mm hmm. And this would be a good example of it, like ba pa shkizige gizigat. So the B, it sounds like ba, and then the next syllable is pa, p a a. So the letter B and the letter P are interchangeable. Um, ba B sound is the soft sound, and P is the hard sound. So as soon as I hear that pa sound, like it changes from soft to hard, I know that something's going on in the sentence. And, you know, um, bells go off in my head, okay, okay, something's happening here. It switched to the hard sound. But posh is a gay you get what happened? So that's what I think about in my head. And I think, oh, okay, so it's emphasizing posh is a gay, which is the explosion part. So, um, you know, it's, it's, this must be like a really big explosion day. And it, and it is, it's <laughs> talking about fireworks, fireworks right. day. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think soft and hard letters are something we're doing in the next coming weeks. Mm -hmm. So there'll be more. We'll elaborate more on that. Perfect. Perfect. And so then, just so was the fir uh, the right in the middle. Then the was say that just means clear. And then yeah. just the say at the end that though that alone means it flies. Yeah, yeah, but by themselves, they're, they're, they're the word parts right now, but by, they're called morphemes. Mm -hmm. But by themselves, they're, they're, they're nothing. They can't stand alone. Okay. That explains it. Hmm. That's awesome. Ooh, I like this next one. I'm like, I don't even remember this one. Did you throw this one in here? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. I just got a message from somebody. Um, so it's Gichi Mukoman Aki? Yeah. Gichi Mukoman Aki. Aki. 
All right, so the word is um, gitche, which is a preverb, meaning big or great. Um, mokoman is a knife. And akih is earth, land, ground, or country. Um, this word comes from, um, it means American, someone who is American, or uh, not American, but America, United America. States of America. Okay. And then the thing behind it, it says ni, and that means noun inanimate. So I know that it's more of a place. If it had N-A, then it would mean like an American, like a person. But Kichimokamon Ake is the United States, and it comes from when um, Anishinaabe first uh, encountered, um, you know, Americans a long time ago, and we used to have battles with them. And when they went into battle, um, Anishinaabe would bring their sacred items with them, and they would put their sacred items like... Um, beside them, uh, like on their hip, you know, where someone puts a sword mm -hmm. uh, right, right, on their, right on their hip there. Um, that's where uh, they seen Americans. They had those sabers when they first encountered them. They said, oh, that must be their, their sacred item that they're bringing into battle with them. You know, for us, it might be a hatchet or, or, or something like that or a, a knife. For these guys, it was uh, the saber, those long knives. Mm -hmm. So that's what they were calling them. They were calling them the... The long knives, the the big, oh. big knife. So they thought that was their sacred item. So that's what they called them. The, and then that's what, um, especially in Minnesota, what they call non-native people there is they call them um, chimokes, chimokes. I think there's a helicopter like that. But um, anyways, uh, get your mokum on. Um, talking about uh, long knives, and that's what they call non-native people like. Caucasian people in Minnesota. So it's kind of like shortened to from Gitche to Che. And instead of saying Mokamon, it's Mok. So they're saying Chimok, which is long knife. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, it's cool how some of these words go back to history. Like they. Um, Kind of, this is a good example of how our ancestors thought mm -hmm. uh, and, and how our language and culture is related because that's how they came up with a name is because, and then you have a teaching in there as well. Um, when you go into battle, you bring in your sacred items. I know when, um, when people are, are uh, nowadays when they're protesting um, or they're doing a demonstration, they bring their sacred items. Like they'll, they'll go to a demonstration with their jingle dress or um, you know, whatever regalia they have or sacred items. Mm -hmm. So I thought that's pretty cool, that how they do it today versus, you know, yesterday. Yeah, I didn't know that, so that's interesting. Oh, there's that. Okay. Here's the next word. Oh, total loss now. There we go. Boo. Ah, uh, ba on. Oh. oh, I'm gonna have questions on this one. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, ba on. B T I. Undo something. Untie something. Ah, uh, undo. Um, uh, act on something or using a tool or medium. Uh, there's a few words that start out with this. Um, Abob Kai Gun is the first one that jumps out to me. It means keys. Abob Kai Gun. So Ab starts out with Ab means undo something. So when you're opening a door or unlocking a door. Huh. Abob. Yeah. And then the un part at the end just means it. So undo it, what it sounds like to me. So would the A N then at the end be um, at the end be like the say from the previous word because it doesn't you, it can't stand alone. Say it from the previous word. The the wawa say say when I asked you just say means it flies, but you, it can't be used all by itself. It has to be used in something else. Is that yeah. what an is well, like? This, this an is more like something, the word something. 
And this is what oh. makes it a VTI, okay. you know, a, a transfer inanimate. So this is like untie something. So the something is actually the AN at the end. Gotcha. That makes sense. So much to learn. Yeah, there's a lot of little rules. I was um, working with my buddy. He's a coworker. He's an IT guy. He's originally from Germany, and he had to learn uh, English. Um, and if, being from Europe, he knows multiple languages already. Mm -hmm. And he, um, Ojibwe by far is the hardest to learn because he's doing like um, he's creating kind of like a, a translating tool from Microsoft. Oh my! Um, I'll share it. Yeah, I'll share it with you when I'm ready, where you can just pump in words. And <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's time-consuming, though. Oh, I'm sure. Okay, well, that yeah, one's... He... Was, was that your question on there? Was the uh, yep. reduplication? Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, it seemed pretty straightforward. I will remember oh, it, of course. <laughs> yeah. I, you, you had a question on this one on your video. Um, I, yeah, I didn't know what, um, why what gob was. Why I... <laughs> we go... <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, what he said. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Bishagobi. Um, Bishug. Peel something. Gobi is basswood. Um, he or she peels we go. It's actually the season right now for peeling we go. You know what it is? No. All right, cool. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what it is. Yay. Um, every year. Um, birch bark comes off the birch trees, and when it's building another layer, like it's getting, it's getting expanding, it's getting bigger. Uh huh. It has to uh, the birch bark has to pop off a little bit to make room for the growth. So once it pops off, there's like little air in between. Mm -hmm. So you can cut a line straight down the tree, and then peel, peel the birch bark off, and that only happens in um, middle to late June. So right now is the time of the year to get birch bark. Um, right now, it'll just pop off. You just cut a line on the tree, and then you peel it off, and then you don't kill the tree either. Um, but at the same time, you need weed gob. Weed gob is uh, think of it as like thread. It's like it's like unbreakable, um, and it's the inner bark of basswood tree. And once you cut that off, it comes off the same way, and then you kind of peel it off. So you have these really, really long strips of inner bark, and then you can make them to any size you want, and that's what you sew your birch bark baskets with. That's what you um, makes them unbreakable. Oh wow, that's really cool. I've done I've done the birch bark part before. I've I've oh. peeled that off, but I've I've never I've, I had no idea what the weak up was. Oh, I thought you might try it like on a palm tree or something. <laughs> I actually have some birch bark here in LA cuz from the last time I went home. So it's like laying flat hidden away cuz I've I've been making jewelry with it. So There you go. Yeah, we did a we did a session in one of the classes uh oh, 2 weeks ago where I went into the classroom with a couple of elders and we showed them how to make uh, baskets. It was pretty fun. I think you posted pictures about that, didn't you? Uh, somewhere I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that was my only question on this word when I pulled it up because I'm like, what in the heck is Weegub and why do I want to peel it? <laughs> uh, I kind of trick the students there too because one of the elders, I, and they always do, they say, um, Weegub is hard to pull apart. No one can, can break it. And then uh, while they're not looking like prior to to them, showing them that what's going on. I cut it just enough where if I pull it, it'll break. So then as soon as they're done speaking, I just kind of say, well, look how strong I am. Can you do this? <laughs> so then I break it, and then they try it, and they're like, holy man, I can't even. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Man of Steel. <laughs> so, so, so cool. My mm. favorite word ever, next to I'm awesome. Mm -hmm. This one kind of puzzles me. Why is that? Because it ends, because it's a noun animate. So it's considered alive. Mm hmm. Um, but I don't know why it's alive. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe because, it expands. <laughs> maybe because of the. Um, the oil, is that what you said? Uh, it like, expands, yeah, like it grows from, you know, gets bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. it, I don't know, I'm just guessing, I don't know for sure. If I was to ask an elder why is a uh, fry bird considered alive, I bet you um, 9 out of 10 elders would tell me, it just is. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you call fry bread fry bread? Um... Yeah, I call it fry bread, call it bannock. Um, I think in, um, where is that, uh, Manitoulin Island where I used to live, they call it uh, scone. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I call it for the longest time, scone. Well, that's how I always knew it as, and it wasn't until I moved here that people called it fry bread. And when I said scone, they're like, what? So I started calling it fry bread. And then, um, and then I just recently met a writer from um, New York State, and she calls it scone as well. She's like, yeah, I don't know what this fry bread stuff is. So that was kind of <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you have a particular, do you make fry bread? Um, I try to, and the key word there is try. <laughs> it took burning it or something or, you know. I get distracted easily, you know, I hear something on the TV or something or outside and I don't know. What is your, can you share your recipe with us or no? I don't have a particular one. Um, I, I could try, I mean, I could, <laughs> you know, uh, I got a <laughs> funny story, we had to make some uh, bannock on a stick. That was oh, I've never tried that. Oh, that one's good. I mean, I, I made, I made. I made everything there, and then um, I kind of left it in the fire by accident, <laughs> so it didn't turn out too good. But we were doing them with kids and everything, and I don't know, I got a whole bunch of questions and didn't stay on topic. Uh, <laughs> so my coworkers were bugging me, saying the bannock was hard as heck, like cement. <laughs> but yeah, you know what? It's really tasty, the bannock on a stick. You just put it right at the end of the stick. Uh huh. You know, like a loop it, and then you push it in together so it stays, and then you put it above the fire, not in the flame. Okay. And it actually tastes good when it's a little bit burnt. You put a little bit of uh, butter on it. So, bannock then is, it, ban bannock is baked, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think of bannock like B2 sajigan. It's it's the, the dough when it's in its dough state. Right. Yeah, it's just... And then the bannock part is baked, yeah. Yeah, bannock uh, in the oven is, is baked. Um, they're starting to come up with different recipes of using whole wheat now. Yeah. I've, uh, I've well, the, well, that's why, like, well, because it's not really fry bread then, is it, if it's baked? Because it's... Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how fry bread came along? No, I don't. It's, it's a cool story. It's really... It, it makes our ancestors look really cool. Um, <laughs> what happened is, uh, like, it, it, it never used to be a traditional food, but I guess now it is a traditional food. Mm -hmm. And a long time ago, like, um, the Native people would come into communities to buy groceries and stuff and then go back out to their um, reserves and, and, you know, they, they'd live, they'd live off the land. And when they come into town, they usually get pots and pans or whatever. Not many kind of supplies, but then they, you know, they didn't have freezers back then, so they'd smoke their meat, and that's what they would eat, the smoked meat. Um, so they couldn't really buy, like, ground beef or whatever in town because it might go bad or they have to smoke it right away. But um, Bannock, Bannock started coming along because um, some of the, uh, 
some of the government officials that were supposed to give, um, you know, five dollars a year to Native people a fishing net, you know, on Treaty Day. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then they give them supplies, food supplies. So they gave them uh, flour and uh, oil, and they're like, you know, baking powder. What the heck are we gonna make out of this? And voila. Okay. Yeah. Because you can transport it, it doesn't really go bad. Um, you know, you don't have to keep it frozen. But in theory, bannock is way healthier for you than fry bread because you're baking it as opposed to cooking it like in an inch of grease. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can um, just put it in tin foil and put it beside the fire, mm -hmm. and then it'll cook like that. Oh, I'm going to have to try that next time, too. <laughs> yeah, it's the old way. The first time I had made fry bread in a long time, um, I tr I'm like, oh, I live in California now, so I'm going to try whole wheat flour. And um, I made little hockey pucks because I burnt them because they stayed in the oil too long. Or no, I didn't want to use too much oil, so they really just like really fried it. And they were hard, and I was bringing them to like a, a potluck. It was like this international foods potluck at work. So I really didn't represent very well because I served everyone hockey pucks. <laughs> <laughs> Should have told them it was the NHL playoffs. <laughs> because it's the cup. <laughs> <laughs> I have yeah. made it since, though, and it, I, I've, I'm just like, screw it. I use white flour and a ton of lard, and um, it works out well. And I've actually, but you, I have like vegan friends and stuff here, so... I think I may have fed, I hope you're not watching this, guys. I may have fed my vegan friends some lard, like animal lard. Because they're like, oh my gosh, this is really good. And I'm like, I don't remember which one I used. Sorry. I... Oh, that's funny. Okay, let's move on to the next word. So we'll just ignore that. Did you have any more questions, comments on that one? <laughs> Did you put the hole in the middle? Um, no. I've, I've been making it without the hole. Because when I made the hockey pucks, I had the hole in them, and they didn't turn out well. And then when oh. I tried it this next time, I made it without the hole. And, um, yeah. I found out the hard way to, to, um, to put the hole in there, because mm -hmm. the middle is a little bit doughy sometimes. Oh, I, I, I haven't had that problem. Hmm. More oil, that's the secret. <laughs> More lard. Okay, okay, so the word, though, just to go over the word parts on that one, zasasokwan, fry bread. Zas. Zas is sigle, um, sizzle or crack. Akokwau is drum or kettle. And then the N turns it into a noun. Nominal lines. Pretty easy word, actually. The N at the end? Yeah, at the very end. Uh, the okay. Yeah, it turns it into a noun. And then the AA -A turns it into a noun inanimate? Is that... It turns it like... Um, noun animate? It's like adding ING to it in English. Okay. Running, jumping, frying. Hmm. So all together in English, it might sound like sizzling, cracking, drumming, kettling, object. <laughs> okay. Hmm. I'll bet you two. I'll bet you two. V A I. Oof. You know how to say this one? Um, Apiji Batu. Yeah, there you go. Apiji Batu. He or she runs away for good. Hmm. Apid, permanent, complete. Batu, he or she runs or moves fast. I think we talked about Batu before, huh? Um, uh, I think so. Batu what? is running, yeah. I, I hear that quite a bit. Bimi Batu, he or she is running. Running inside. Being de gay, but two being de gay meaning entering a building, but two is running, so enter a building through running. But two, you're gonna hear but two quite a bit. 
I think the word that we used last time was anime bizunetu. That's what I remember. <laughs> oh, that was good. Wow. Oh, yeah, because oh, you were teaching me that word on how to memorize it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, how you had to do the dance for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But see, look, I remembered it. I name it in a tune. I name it in a tune. So on this one, I notice we're adding a J and an I right smack dab in the middle. Oh, yeah. Oh, kid. Yeah, remember, um, I think a few words before this in the last <coughs> part, maybe, um, the word part ended, it had a D in there, and then mm -hmm. once it was used in a word, the the D got changed to a J, and I, I wasn't sure why. Mm -hmm. I just thought it, it did. And I, I still don't know. I don't, I don't know why right now. Why is it, it switched to a J? Like, it looks like a typo, but it's not. Hmm. But that's the that's the original word part, and then uh, as soon as you put it into a word, it, the D changes to a J. Right. But that one's one of those irregular ones. Like it doesn't happen, you know, all the time, or, or you're not going to see it all the time. Usually, they stay consistent. Okay. Hmm. But if I look in the in our, the dictionary. Um, they have apogee, which means very, quite. Yeah. Wow, that's... All that's... by itself, yeah. Apogee, and it says PC behind it, probably? Yes. Particle, yeah. Yeah, um, hmm. when I first when I first look at this, apogee means very or quite, and then, but two is running, so when I think about it, it's, it sounds like he's, uh, he's very much running, or he's running very much. Um... I wouldn't know that opid is the the root or the stem word, permanent or complete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I know that if if they were trying to say that um, here she is running very much, they would say opid and then a space, and then bimibitu. They wouldn't combine them. They so would this be. one's combined. Yeah, this one's combined. So I know that okay, um, opid doesn't mean very or quite, like particle, mm -hmm. this is something totally separate. Because op because particles, um, we can't we can't do anything to them. We can't combine them with words. Like we can't mash them together. They have to stay on their own. And that's with every particle on there. They can't they can't um, be combined or inflected or you can't say I am very something like mean opogen. Oh. Yeah, you can't do anything to them. You can add a, an emphasis to it at the end, but even when you add it to the end, you have to put a space. Hmm. Yeah, I think we chatted a bit about that in, in particle section. Yeah. It's always good, though, to talk about it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, particles, yeah, they got to stay on their own. That's the only rule of them. And then the, and wait, wait. Okay, no, never mind. I'm good. <laughs> oh. Anima adun? Anima adun. Anima adun. Yeah, um, follow somebody or follow something. Away as in a trail, VTI two, um, verb transitive inanimate. So you're doing an action to something that's inanimate. In this case, it's following something. Um, a nim away in the other direction. A ud track or trail it, and then uh, the un part is the something. Remember the other one we had aba un, and it was a VTI. And the A-N meant something. On this one, the O-O-N also means something. But it's a V-T-I-2. So a 2 meaning, um, you know, when I see the number 2, I think of un, O-O-N, tune. A lot of times the V-T-I-2s will end in tune. 
all of the VTI2s will end in O-O-N. So the O-O-N is just being something. Okay. So when I'm looking at the work parts, a NIM away in the other direction out is track, and then the UN is something. So track something, follow something. UN means something. Hmm. I like this word. It seems very straightforward. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. As opposed to all of the other words we've had so far. <laughs> yeah. Yep, I hear you. Oof. Minozekwe? He or she cooks well. Um, work parts? Min? Good. Izekwe? Cook. You know, Zay Quay. Um, we see this pretty often with the W, the word part having a W in it, but as soon as you use it, it gets dropped. Mino Zay Quay. So, and I think we talked about uh, combining these words too. Um, so, M I N, so the W gets dropped, and then the Zay Quay uh, gets put behind it, so he or she cooks well. Cool thing about the word Mino. Is it's a preverb, and you could throw that on anything. If you could say um, he or she is well, like um, mino aya, mino meaning good, and then aya is like being or dwelling. Um, it also happens in like nice day or good day, mino gijigat, mino uh, meaning good, gijigat meaning day. Um, you're gonna hear it quite a bit, mino, especially when you go fishing. <laughs> um, I have a question though. So, so if minnow means good, and we're dropping the w and adding the o, why is it isekwe, um not with the i? It's an you drop the i then as well. No, the i stayed on there. Um, the the w got dropped. Oh, I see what you mean. But oh yeah. yeah. Okay, so i one i and one o. They're used to combine the words, right? Remember we, we talked about yeah. that? Mm -hmm. One I and one O. So in this case, um, there was already, uh, there was already, it, the I had to stay on there because the word part was is a quay. Is a quay. So um, that's the word part, is a quay. So the mm -hmm. I was so important that it had to stay on there. And then the, the mino, the O, oh, kind of got pushed out. What what actually kind of happens? What I what I suspect happened in this word was, it was mino is a quay mino is a quay. After saying it over and over again, it mm. gets pushed together, mino is a quay, and then you pretty much don't hear the o anymore. Right. So the i is kind of like bullied him out of there. Very violent word. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we do it in English too, like, um, what are you doing? And then we say, what you doing? And then, you doing? When really, we don't actually say, what are you doing? You know, we say, what what you doing? So that's what happened in this one here. We don't say, mino is a quay. We just say, mino is a quay. Mino is a quay. See how it got kind of shortened a little bit? Mm-hmm. So you can still understand what happened in the, or how it's said. Okay. It just is. Just have to say that. Just because. Like the elders tell you, Jason, just tell me that. <laughs> because. <laughs> exactly. Uh. Oh my goodness. Aja, oh no, Ajawa Koshin? Yeah, Ajawa Koshin. Oh, Aja. Ajawa Koshin. Um, the word, uh, this one messed me up first. Aja means already. And I'm putting this on my list of top 10 most used words in Ojibwe. And Aja is a particle that means already. And I hear that, holy cow, all the time, Aja. 
is, is people's answers to, to questions or I hear it all the time already Aja so I thought Aja was already and it is and I thought it meant this was already like something lies across it already mm -hmm. but it had nothing to do with it it doesn't have it has the word Aja but the word is Aja across and that's what kind of threw me off when I first heard this word but it makes sense now Ajo across and then ok stick like or wood like or organic solid and then the shin he or she falls or lies. So uh, Ajo Ako Shin to use it in a sentence would be um, if you're lying across a dock, you know, or something like um, anything wood like, or maybe you're on a table or something, but um, I think of a dock right away when I use Ajo Ako Shin to lie across something would like and this is actually an easy word to to pronounce um, if you're trying to impress somebody and you say hey look at this long word can you pronounce it when they first look at it they might look overwhelmed and say holy cow but it's actually pretty easy Aja and then wa koshin wa koshin I fully agree. This one's an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> I think the word parts make sense too, huh? Yes. But and when you so the um, the aja you were talking about in the beginning that means already. Yeah. Is it is it spelt the same way then? Yeah, it's just the first five letters up here. Aja. Oh, with Aja. no W. Yeah. And that's okay. our Google Hangout for the week. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Hi, Patty. <laughs> Hitting Joanne. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just talking to Patty, too, because she was just like, hey, guys, I'll be back next week. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was at Dairy Queen. <laughs> How was it? <laughs> it was awesome. Uh -oh. It was good. So we just did the word Aja Wakoshin. And we noticed the word Aja in there. But it has nothing to do. It's not the particle already. Aja. It's Aja. And that's what kind of threw threw us off there. I think I remember chatting one time about Aja being probably one in the, in the top 10 most used Ojibwe words. And I think this Auk one is pretty straightforward too. A stick like, wood like. A dupuin Auk is a table. A dupuin is table. Auk is wood like so a wooden table a dupuin knock um, you know when you're going ricing bawaganok bawaganok is those um, rice knockers those sticks you use to to do wild ricing with bawaganok it ends in ok it's wood like so we use um, we use cedar cedar trees for those because cedar is really light wood I think we had a, a similar word so we've had that that word part in here in one of these videos yeah. already yeah, and personally I use oak <laughs> just kidding uh, ready for the next word uh oh I am ready I think that's it I'm, oh that's, wow that was the last word oh wow wow I just I took three sessions so how do you say ice cream <laughs> <laughs> um, got to cog. Got to cog. That's a good one. Got to cog and dace cog. I think in a dictionary it might say dace a cog. Dace a cog. Dace a cog. Day cog. Day cog. Day oh. cog. You hear the word in there, uh, Joanne? Um, da, da ka, which is cold. Mm -hmm. And uh, day cog is actually the, the C form change of it. You remember we did initial vowel change on it? 
and then um, Deka, and then it's actually Deka and Gotkog is the same word. Deka,g if you put that under initial um, vowel change, you know, you had G A A at the beginning, and then D at the end, it means the one who is. Oh yeah. Got, oh okay. Yeah, Gotkog, but then they sound totally different. And you're like, whoa, how the heck can that be the same word? You know, got cog and days cog. But we found that out under initial vowel change. Which is a little bit complicated sometimes. Yeah. Enough said. Enough said for now. <laughs> oh, Jen's furiously flipping through a dictionary. I'm going back and forth from cold to um, ice cream. Oh, okay. That's why. Oh, Daka. D A K A for that word. G. What's the G for then? Um, that just kind of does it say N I and then this one's a really weird one. Does it say N I and then a hyphen P T? Yes. How do you know that? Oh, wow. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's like a noun inanimate uh, participle. Or, um, I want to say participle, but I'm not sure. Participle meaning it's an object, but it's it sounds more like a verb, like a VAI. Like it is cold, it is it is chilled, but then it's trying to make it sound like a noun because it's an object. But it, it's almost like it can't decide. I don't know if I'm a noun. I don't know if I'm a verb. Kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to explain it. Um, it, it's a it's a um, verb-like noun, I guess. A verb-like noun. It's rare. I don't think you're going to see any more of those uh, ni hyphen pt. You might, you probably would, but it would be wouldn't be too much. There's one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. So, what other fun words can we think of how to say? Yeah, look for oh, some chocolate covered. <laughs> ice cream. What kind of ice cream did you have? I had a medium cone chocolate dipped. Ooh, how do you say all of that? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Really putting the challenge on it. Eh? So that dipped in chocolate would be like an action, right? It would be something that happened to the, yeah, the thing that is cold. Ozawak is a gay. Um, yeah, maybe like day cog or got to cog. Oza walk is a gay day cog. Well, wait, there's no uh, word for chocolate in here. <laughs> How do you say chocolate? Uh, you'd have to describe the color. That's why I was going to Oza oh, really? walk. Oh, wow. thing that is made brown. Which doesn't sound appealing then. <laughs> no, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Some things sound better in certain languages. Exactly. Yeah. And you have to describe what it looks like. Hmm, I don't know. Yeah, not always good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So there was no D DQ in traditional times, no DQ. No. No. So what are we going to work on next week? Um, good question. What do you guys want to work on? Anything is good for me. I know nothing. <laughs> okay. Maybe we'll uh, do some... No, some That's something to do again with particles, Jay. Yeah, I like particles. Particles are easy. I like I like them. You know, I have a plan because I was saying this summer I want to do you know spend some time doing some some work on my language stuff. So I was thinking last night that uh, I need to have something concrete to do. Like so, I'm thinking I'm going to use like flashcards, right? I'm going to do I'm going to work on particles. I'm going to work on memorizing particles. So I'll do up like. 10 and I'll work on those 10 till I can remember them and then I'll move on make 10 more mm. Mm, there you go oh you know so there's a good my idea. plan 
would be, um, and, and right. I think I want to do this too, is uh, to get familiar with a lot of the objects around my place that I use, like cups, spoons. Um, I know them, but stuff like refrigerator or blender or something, um, maybe put labels on them. Mm -hmm. And I, I kept saying I was going to do it, but I never did, and that was like five years ago. But um, <laughs> That's a good idea, I actually. You know what, my daughter... That. When my daughter was learning how to read one of them, she labeled like everything in her room. I kid you not. Sticky notes, eh? You gotta love that. Mm. So there you go. Oh, yeah. Okay, maybe we'll do some of those then. We'll uh, come up with some words that you can label around the house. And there's probably some out there. Like, there's probably people out there who've already done it. Maybe mm -hmm. we can get in touch with those people and see what they've come up with. Good idea. Yeah. I'll do some looking around, but I'll do something with particles, too. Okay. And if there's anybody out there that has words you know, that they want to know, we can ask, you know, just people out there and see if anyone has words. So then there, we can post our houses with Post-its. Because I know I was, I was thinking of doing that, too, since I want to yeah. learn words. <laughs> Maybe throughout the, the week, if you guys could just send me in English stuff you guys have there around the house that you want translated? Oh, that'd be great. Okay. I can do that. Cool. I might have to make a note to remind myself of that now. <laughs> and Patty will be back, so maybe she'll have some words as well for us, and maybe if Jen joins us as well, the other Jen. Ooh, awesome. So we'll have a whole list. Good stuff. But otherwise, we're done for the day. Nope, All right. Nope. Thank you for joining us for the last couple of minutes. And <laughs> yeah. We learned, Sorry. we learned some words. Come on, ice cream. <laughs> ice cream. Good stuff. Mm, yummy. Okay. <laughs> Have a great week. Bye, guys. Bye, <laughs> Pete. How do I do this? Where am I? Okay, so we're done on another week. So if you have any words, send them to me, either Twitter, Facebook, or the comments down below, and we will learn words next week. Hopefully by the, by the end of summer, join Joanne, myself, Jason. Well, Jason knows everything already. But just join us and learning some more language. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>